Welcome, 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 welcome. This video is on precision mixing. Now I'm going to be specifically dealing with uh, mixing in a live sound environment, more specifically an auditorium, theater, uh, church environment. Um, this video is more so informational, uh, and instructional, um, and a lot less hands-on. Okay, so questions may rise. When that time comes, we'll do some uh, Q and A, hands-on, in the uh, in the situation with a band or you know in the sound booth, whatever, or wherever. So um, with that, just a quick background on mixing. Oftentimes, uh, mixing is going to um, be uh, uh, be a process, be a flow where you're going to analyze what you're listening for. You're going to perceive through sight and sound what's going on on your platform. Uh, and as you perceive that, you're going to analyze what's going on, and then you're going to basically decide or make a decision as to what you're going to do next. You're typically going to be, you're typically going to be manipulating sounds in a uh, high, middle, or low frequency. Um, high sounds may sound like a cymbal, you know, uh, something along the lines of a cymbal crash, a hi-hat crash. Um, things in the middle, you're going to find... Um, are going to be more like a tom, uh, more like acoustic and electric guitars, the voice. Um, things in a low frequency you're going to find are, that are going to be more like a kick drum. Uh, they're going to be more like a bass guitar and things of that uh, respect. So with that, I'm going to dive right into precision mixing and um, more so from a general topic. Uh, and once again, we'll get hands on in the booth uh, as always, because that's how I roll. So um, precision mixing now when it comes to creating a mix this is generally a topic you're gonna not gonna find much material on okay because every area every room is different okay mixing every band is different okay however some material does exist for the most part every band every singer every quartet has a different sound that they want to put out okay now personally I've worked with bands uh, that know their sound and then they they know what they're wanting and, and then there are some bands that just don't have a clue Okay? One could say that mixing live sound is relative, but some uh, may offer that as an excuse. Okay, um, You can always blend a band. You can always blend the highs, the mids, and the lows. Okay, Now, my purpose in exploring this topic, precision mixing, is mainly to get the technician or the engineer, you, that's right, you, is to mainly to get you, uh, who's running a sound at the front of house location position, to mix the band according to the variables and politics that exist in live sound within that room. Okay? Now, um, uh, beyond EQing uh, the voice and gain setting structure, uh, I want you to see the difference between a safe mix and a precise mix that gives the feeling that you're mixing in a ticketed event or a ticketed concert, okay? You want the sound to really come alive. You really do, all right? So, let's get into it. What is a safe mix? I would describe a safe mix to be one where nothing stands out. This mix can be called square, okay? Uh, the lead vocal is out front, next layer is the background vocals, next is a combination of keys and guitar with some accents of horns, tambourines, etc. Lastly, the foundation of the mix is the drums. Uh, if this is your mix from start to finish, then you have achieved the ultimate and a safe static mix. Now don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. Uh, this safe mix will get you started in extreme cases. For example, band members are late or the band has no real sense of arranging the song with crescendos and accents. And some instrumentalists may even lose passion and power in their playing, subsequently falling out of their place in the mix. Sometimes it's going to be a struggle to even get a handle on the mix in these conditions, but you'll want to stay calm and you'll get through it. Remember, this too shall pass. Okay. Now, uh, let's specifically get into precision mixing. Now, the capacity for mixing is within us all who take on the console. Mixing live audio should never be done passively. It should be punchy and aggressive. Mix with passion. Mix live, okay? Now, here's a precision mixing process you should all practice while mixing included in this process is, pay attention, patience, analysis and decision 
okay? Uh, patience, analysis, and decision making. This is a process that you're going to have to go through. Um, this is a PAD type process. I, I'm kind of coining this phrase here so you can kind of figure it out. So remember this uh, you're going to need to have patience. You're going to need to analyze what's going on, you know, see what's here versus there, what's right versus left, what's powerful versus what's soft, uh, and then you're going to need to make a decision. Okay, this is a part of your process. Now, when it comes to patience, you're gonna need to have patience with yourself, okay? So as not to lose your cool, okay? Or lose your mind in that situation. You're gonna need to uh, utilize analysis, being diligent in what you're looking for. Develop a reason for what you wanna do or why you wanna do it. Uh, then thirdly, you're going to uh, dive into decision-making, executing an action based on your analysis or reason. OK, so be uh, also what you want to do is you want to also be sensitive to where the song is going, where uh, as the song is, is basically being played, the song is uh, going through a movement. You want to uh, kind of watch for signals. Is the uh, is the leader uh, going somewhere? Is the leader moving from the chorus to the uh, chorus to the bridge or from the pre-chorus to the chorus or, you know, wherever um, you, you want to be cognizant of that. Uh, where you know where I mostly run sound, we uh, typically make use of the the verse as in being one, the second verse being two, the chorus uh, taking place like this, um, the what is it, the bridge being like three, um, and then end of song being a balled up fist. Okay, uh, and so with that, you want to know those cues. You want to take time to get to know kind of how your band is flowing, how they communicate, so that you can also communicate and receive the signals as well. Now, um, once again, uh, you're probably thinking that the music is prearranged. Shouldn't we know where the music is going? You know, the song, they, they sound checked. Shouldn't we know this already? Um, but in a world of safe mixes, you are correct. However, if you are entering the realm of variables and precision mixing, most performing musicians on stage will get creative. Okay? They will get creative from time to time, and you may have to mix some things on the fly. Guitar solo, a drum solo. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, if they can create it, it will happen. Um, these are some variables or variations may include, but are not limited to, guitar solos, drum solos, vocal improvisations, chanting. I, I trust me, I've seen it all. I have seen it. Um, impromptu medleys of songs, even in the same key. Um, and that last one will test your patience if you are not expecting it. Okay. Um, so now remember we discussed PAD previously, uh, the patience, the analysis and decision. Well, to kind of put a spin on that PAD, um, we're going to put another acronym out there. PDA. Okay. Now some of y'all thinking PDA, what, what, what's up with PDA? Um, check this out. Now, in an effort to kind of streamline your process, what we're gonna do is uh, you're going to perceive. Now, we're mixing here, so you're gonna perceive. You're gonna use your eyes and your ears to decide what's going on, okay? Uh, sight and sound. Then you're going to decide the action, okay? D, decide the action. Then you're going to, A, act accordingly on your mixing console until you have the desired effect. I'm gonna repeat this, okay? P, perceive. D, decide. And then A, act. Okay, we're going straight on developing this process so that you can move uh, aggressively and so that your mix is as punchy and you know where the song is going. Matter of fact, you're uh, taking uh, an active participation in making the song what it is. All right, now working through PDA, PDA, working through PDA will quickly reduce your response time in making things happen. Um, this reminds me of a time when I remember people would say, man, so-and-so, you know, so-and-so, when they get on the board, it's like uh, molasses. They can't get stuff done. They can't answer cues. But I, you know, I need some more of my monitor and I needed it like yesterday. So I need you to produce, produce, produce. Okay. So when you produce, 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 it, 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 it comes, it comes to fruition. Now, I must say, you should welcome unexpected changes, okay? This is going to help you produce something called maturity. Now, maturity is brought on by these unexpected changes, and they help you to mold a new level of skill within yourself, okay? Later, after the event is done, after the concert is, is, is performed and demonstrated, uh, you should go take a moment and journal. Write down every little detail you can remember about the experience, what you learned, what you liked, what you didn't like. Uh, take down new lessons and techniques learned and how you can improve. 
Now, in conclusion, look for opportunities to mix different styles and different genres of music. Your personal goal as an engineer that's learning constantly is to be able to conquer any mixing console that you meet. You should always run the mix. You should never let the mix run you. Okay, so I went through briefly um, PAD and I went through briefly there again PDA, perceive, decide, and act accordingly. So those are some things that hopefully helped you out. Um, I know this video has got a little bit of link to it, but I ran through it. Hope this helps. Have a great one and mix live.